right, man, getting to it. This is easily one of my most requested videos. DIY distressed denim. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I go about distressing my jeans. And just like all of my other DIY videos, this one is very simple. I distress jeans way different than everyone else. This is somewhat unorthodox and uh, you, you'll see, but this is not how most people do it, but it works and I think it has the best results. So hanging behind me are two pairs of jeans, some of my favorites that I've distressed and get asked about pretty often. So this pair is some light stone wash Levi's and this is very important to note. I got these for like 30 or $40 and I had them tapered to fit me better and then I obviously distressed them myself. In my opinion, the best pair of jeans to start with is a pair of Levi's. So down below, I'm gonna link you all these different options to Levi's denim. There's a bunch of different washes, there's a bunch of different colors. Find one that you think you would like to distress. It's a sales section, so you're gonna save a little bit of money and if you mess up, it's, it's all good because you didn't really spend too much. But the move, trust me, is to get a pair of Levi's and have them tapered to fit you better and then go about distressing them. So these are the two pairs of jeans that I'm gonna be working on. They're totally different colors. These charcoal gray joints are from Contemporary Goods and they have a little bit of a light gray wash to them. This pair, you're gonna see my version of a blowout and uh, how I like to style that and how I go about it. And for this pair from Mott and Bow, this is kind of a unique pair of denim. It's this raw indigo color. So it's like a dark navy blue. And I don't have many pairs of jeans that are in this color. However, there's no wash on these. I think that when I distress them, it's gonna create this great contrast with the white threads that I'm hoping are gonna be exposed. Just like all of my DIY tutorial and how-to style videos, you don't need many tools to do this. All you need is a pair of scissors, some sandpaper, a vacuum, and a washing machine. So four things total. So now that you know what you need, let's get into the distressing part of the video. You guys might think this is a little bit crazy, but you asked how I distress my denim, and this is how I do it. I literally open up the scissors and I mark on the jeans while I'm wearing them where I want my distress marks to be. Now don't be soft and think that this is gonna hurt your skin, it's not. You're not actually making your distress marks totally right now, you're just barely cutting onto the denim. If you run a sharp edge, like a point of a scissor, across your denim back and forth a few times, it's gonna leave a mark. And that is essentially the first step. So what I do is I usually make a diagonal cut. You can go side by side if you want to, but I like diagonal cuts. I think it's unique and you don't always see it on like manufactured distressed denim. So I'm going back and forth just to make that line and it doesn't need to cut through the denim. I'll put on some music or watch TV and grab a drink while I'm doing this. I'm not really in a rush. All you're doing is marking where your distress line is going to be. So I like the diagonal line I put on my left knee. Now I'm gonna move over to the right side. If it's easier to go back and forth, do that. If you're getting better results just by going in one direction, that's fine. Okay, so this next step is obviously the most important one where you actually distress the denim. Typically, you wanna do this step on the floor so that you can vacuum it afterwards because it does make a little bit of a mess. I'm doing it on my couch here because this gets the best light. There's a skylight above this that uh, is just perfect. So I'll just use my extension on my vacuum to clean it up afterwards. But definitely do this on the floor and save yourself some hassle. So you could use an X-Acto knife here or something sharp than scissors, but the reason why I think the scissors are the best thing to use is because they're somewhat dull. So the more times you go back and forth on the fabric with the edge of the scissors, it's gonna get a better look. If you cut right into it 
with an X-Acto knife and then, you know, go from there, it's not going to look as good. So the more times you go back and forth with your straight edge, the better the distressing is going to be. And before I start cutting, I'm sneaking a t-shirt down the leg just so that I don't go through the other side and that something is pushing up against the denim. I'll just start going against the thread like I'm doing now. So the more times you do this, the better the look is gonna be. So throw on some music, like I said, and already I'm starting to get some fuzz coming up off the denim. As long as you stay in the same area, you're good. It doesn't have to be on that same exact cut because you know, it, it'll just look better if you have multiple lines. Okay, so this is the result so far. As you can see, I let my blade go up and down a little bit. Here's my original line and I floated up a little bit. So this area is being distressed as opposed to just that original line that I made. And as you can see right here, I started to cut through the fabric just a little bit. That's good. So now that I've got a small hole in the denim, before I continue, what I'm gonna do is hit it with this sandpaper. I'm gonna soften up the denim just a little bit. So what I'll do is bend the sandpaper a little bit, put my finger behind it, and then just go down the edge. So all I'm doing here is softening up the denim and distressing this entire area. So again, it's not just that line, it's the whole area it's involved with. And this is when it really starts to get a little bit messy, so the, the fuzzies start flying. So now I'm just gonna go back and forth between the sandpaper and the scissors until I get a full cut. This is when the sandpaper is the most important in my opinion. You hit it now and it really gives it an awesome distressed look. So it really brings out everything. So this is when your threads start to get exposed when you hit it with the sandpaper. So I'm just gonna continue the same process and bring the distressing out a little bit further. See how much better that looks than if you rush the process and just cut right into it. From here, I'll continue to hit the sides just a little bit further so that it doesn't look just like clean denim and then a distress mark. So, you know, it looks good here, then a little roughed up, and then you get your distressing area. Okay, so now switching over to the other side, we're gonna do the same exact process. Okay, so for this side, I decided to blow it out a little bit. I've got my straight line down towards the bottom, but if you noticed, I also went up diagonal a little bit. So I've got this piece that's kind of hanging off towards the side. After you're done with all your distressing, you're gonna grab your jeans and you're gonna throw them in the washing machine. Depending on what type of denim you have, you know, you may need to wash it differently. How you set your washing machine is up to you. I don't wanna be responsible for anything, but what I typically do is put them on cold and I wash them for like 30 minutes. Now I'm gonna get started on the indigo pair. The process is the exact same. I just have to choose where I want the distressing to be. The only difference is I might not throw these in the washer machine at the end given their material. Raw denim and something like this doesn't always wash that well. So I'm undecided what I'm gonna do. So let's get into these.
right, so there we go. Both pairs of jeans are done. The gray pair turned out so dope. I'm excited to wear those. This pair, I may need to actually wash. I didn't think that I was gonna wash them. I thought I could just distress them and uh, that would be that. But I might take a risk and actually throw these in the wash and see how they turn out. I'm gonna throw both of these pants on right now. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video. After I rock both of them, the video is gonna be over. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. And let me know if you wanna see more DIY and how-to style videos. A lot of good stuff on the way, so keep it locked. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.